Hey, so this is my Kona Rove e-bike build. And I, this is my first time building an e-bike. And I just had a couple breakthroughs that I've been painfully uh, trying to fix over the last couple months. But uh, finally, I've come up with a solution. So the main thing was the gearing. I was running, well, I still am running an Advent X uh, real, derailleur, real derailleur, 10 speed and then uh, the cassette as well. And I was running into issues with the chain line, number one, um, which I'll get to in a minute. And then also the the smallest 11 tooth, God, I can't talk, smallest 11 tooth rear cog skipping out, even with the B tension set up um, the way it should be. Um, and I think the chain line was so bad that if I had the, the be tension out enough for it to get onto this cog. It wasn't having enough tooth wrap on the smallest one. So what I ended up doing, <laughs> I've tried slowly but surely spacing this cassette out with spacers, you can see here. So that's actually four spaces. I think it's, I think they're roughly two each. So it's probably like 10 millimeters roughly of space. I haven't measured it. But anyway, um, <laughs> so what was a 10 speed cassette and uh shifter is now an eight speed i tried doing the nine speed down to uh so it went to a 13 tooth and i had problems with the lock ring being able to hold on to that and also the chain to the chain line for the biggest cog that was still not great in the 13 tooth nine speed configuration so what i ended up doing was making eight speed so this is actually one single piece, this MicroShift uh, HG103 cassette, I believe. You have to check. But um, it's like the heavier duty, all steel e-bike version. And so all steel, or the, all one piece goes down to the 15 tooth, uh, which actually, you know, unfortunately you lose a little bit of gearing there. But I do have a bigger chain ring in the front, so I, was running my 46 tooth Lecky, which is uh, again, unfortunate not to run because it's beautiful and also um, very smooth feeling. But um, I do have this <laughs> cheapo Decaz uh, Amazon version, and this is a 48 tooth. So eventually if they, maybe if they make a, uh, like a 52 tooth Lecky or 48 tooth, I might have to invest in that. But um, for now this works, unfortunately. You know, the chain line is terrible on this thing. I tried to have a, a spacer push it back a little bit, but ended up hitting the the motor itself. It's a, a BBS02, 750 watt. Uh, so I ended up having to space it out with a lucky spacer, uh, which kind of negated what I was trying to do to get the chain ring inwards. So lucky, if you can make a 48 tooth or 52 tooth, <laughs> Uh, BBS02 chain ring, that would be freaking awesome. Um, because I still have like probably an inch or I don't know, what would you call that? Like 20 millimeters of space there. Uh, so that would make for an even better chain line. So right now, uh, I haven't ridden this yet, but I can tell already this is going to ride so much better. Um, like I said, I was having chain skip issues with the lowest gear because it wasn't wrapping enough, because I had to have the, the B tension out a lot for this biggest gear. So in a normal mountain bike configuration, that'd be fine. But when you're putting almost 1400 watts of power through this thing, they, you know, peak, um, it has a tendency to skip. And I actually have this BBS02 tuned down a little bit. So I think it only puts out a thousand watts when it's at peak, you know, when it's, um, it's not always, it's not continuous, but um, that's that's what you see uh, on the readout anyways, like a thousand watts at certain times. Anyway, uh, what I'm trying to say is if you have a problem with chain line, which this Kona Rove apparently does uh, when you're, you know, it's not meant to run an e-bike motor. Uh, and unfortunately I can't get that chain ring in further because the motor is almost rubbing up against the frame. So, you know, one might say, oh, you could space it inwards, but no, you can't because the motor's in the way. 
So I really would need a special chain ring to be able to get the chain ring close to the frame and ha not have uh, chain line issues with this biggest cog and also get a mount chain wrap I need for the smallest cog. <laughs> so it's been a huge pain trying to figure that out and I don't know who has had the same issue, but uh, I haven't seen very many gravel frames with an e-bike configuration. So this is, you know, my first attempt at building e-bike and honestly, I, it went really well. I planned it out so that, uh, you know, I could always reverse it if I wanted to. And I bought the, the Luna bracket, motor bracket. So, you know, this, the, uh, what do you call it? Just like that star uh, nut that uh, Bef Befang supplies. And what you do is you tighten down these two lock nuts and it crushes the bottom bracket with that uh, motor mount that they supply. And it's just really terrifying, <laughs> honestly. Like I built this from the frame up and I just can't stand the thought of crushing a brand new frame with that, that, that special lock ring. So anyway, this bracket is awesome. It bolts to the down tube, you know, with these two bolts here. Uh, you know, the motor bolts here, and this thing is solid. It just does not go anywhere. I mean, it's it's awesome. Um, so that's been really great. Wiring it up has been awesome. Uh, I used my, actually, here's another fun little trick. So I bought this, this wheel set off Amazon. It's a Novatech 4-in-1, 650B, and they... So unfortunately also with gravel frames, you have these 12 millimeter axles, uh, but I actually had to grind off because there's like, there's a little U-shaped um, inset on these, these axles because you're not gonna, it's not 15 by 100, it's 12 by 100. And these are meant for 15 by 100. So I had to grind away some material around the, uh, the hub itself, which is fine, I mean, it was basically just to allow them to sit inside the little pocket that this, this special fork has in here. Um, and that, that worked out. So I was able to grind the end caps basically. And then, you know, now they sit in the fork and then you can get the axle in and have no problems with that. And I used a uh, 12, mil, 12 millimeter to 15 millimeter adapter on the hub uh, just so I could get the 12 by 100 axle through there. Secondly, this gravel frame, which is also a problem if any of you try to do a gravel e-bike, uh, they use flat mount uh, calipers, like brake calipers, which being a mountain biker, I had no idea <laughs> that that was even a thing. So I had to buy a flat mount to post mount converter, or adapter, I should say, for both the front and the rear. And I ended up, I had a lot of confusion with this as well. And uh, I ended up buying a 160 version, but it turns out when you mount, <laughs> when, I, when I mounted my caliper, for some reason, I don't know why, but maybe it's the caliper itself. But anyway, this is a 160 adapter, but when I mounted up my rotors, my rotors are 180. So I'm actually running 180 rotors with this uh, Zen, sorry, what is it called again? Zent PM FM R160. Uh, so it's a 160 adapter, adapter, but perhaps with the caliper, uh, you know, it allows you to run a 180. Anyway, I'm running a 180 rotor on front and rear, which is really helpful um, because that's all I had. I didn't have 160 rotors. So, um, in fact, I even bought 160 rotors, just like some cheapos, and they didn't fit. I put them on and they were inset of the caliper. I was like, what is going on here? Uh, and turns out it's actually, it fits a 180. So anyway, yeah, here we go. SMMAF160P slash D. 160 rotor only. Oops. Uh, so anyway, don't, uh, don't worry about it. Maybe you can see it better now. Yeah. So anyway, and I'm also running a four piston. Uh, front brake which is great for power but um hopefully it doesn't, it doesn't wreck my bike anyway i don't like reef on it you know just enough stopping power to get you slowed down 
which is really nice for an e-bike. Um, anyway, yeah, this is, again, this is the Bafang BBSO2 kit, which um, has been really fun to ride. Uh, I can get, you know, close to 40 miles an hour on downhill and like along the, on a flat section, you can do 25-ish. But I was also having problems with the gearing, like I said, um, and it would skip out if you were in full power mode and the 11 tooth cog in the back. So I ended up having to run it at a lower power. Um, so I'm hoping now that this thing is like, I mean, this is a, a single piece cassette, like this whole thing. And then there's only two more cogs that I ended up removing. So the 13 tooth and 11 tooth, those are gone. So I'm really hoping the power now I can run full power with the 15 tooth rear and then the 48 tooth front chain ring because that'll help um, my flat flat ground speed and hopefully speed my ride up a little bit. So we'll see. Anyway, it's just an adventure, um, you know, trying to learn how to build an e-bike. I was familiar with building a bike in general because I've done all my own maintenance on bikes and See, I've got my fat bike up here and my, my Kona process, which is currently pieces. Um, so this is my first, you know, first time building a, a bike from the ground up, but I was, I had done headsets before and everything else. So, so it was pretty cool to just kind of go to the next level and build an e-bike. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to put this video out to share it with anyone who's had the same problems um, with gearing on e-bikes. I know I've heard uh, people having problems with it and this is, seems like a good solution uh, as long as you can get a big chain ring up front. That was my main issue. Um, again, and I didn't think it would work at first because I was having all these issues with the, the chain skipping and then not being able to get to the biggest gear. So yeah, probably I'm rambling on and I'm sorry for that, but um, I hope somebody finds this helpful. And if you have any questions about this build, feel free to let me know. All right, thanks. Take it easy.